what's up? I'm Amin Dillon, and welcome to my podcast. I'm sitting down with the movers and shakers and the stars to chat about life, love, business, and being a total boss. It's raw, it's candid, it's the stories behind the headlines. This is In Conversation. Okay. Yes? Ruben, thanks so much for being on the blog. No awesome worries. to see you, bud. Thank you. So we got to start off the show by congratulating you because you're celebrating your 10th anniversary of your YouTube journey. How's it feel? Amazing. You know, I uh, didn't know this journey is going to come that long. Yeah. And I'm here right now. So this feels good. Take us back. So when you first started doing YouTube videos, I don't know if you actually thought ahead 10 years. Is this kind of what you thought life would be like? No, nothing at all. Like when we started it, it was different. We thought it's gonna be a month thing or day thing, yeah, and that's it. But uh, we've uploaded our first video. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't expect anything. Didn't see like people gonna be sharing or yeah. laughing or at anything at all. Yeah. But we got hundred thousand views within a week, and back in two thousand eight, hundred thousand views were like one of the best things yeah. ever. That's like ten million views right now. Yeah. And I was just shocked mm -hmm. how many people watched it, mm -hmm. and didn't expect this at all so this is like amazing journey for you so what's interesting is you started when youtube like now i feel like everyone's on youtube right yeah. it doesn't matter if you're just yeah. have cats it's or you're now. a musician everyone's on youtube yeah. not always for a job i think just everyone wants to communicate that way so yeah. when you guys started i think youtube was still very like new low, very yeah. new like yeah. not many two people were on company. there yeah i think youtube came in 2006 or five so what gave you that idea where you're like, you know, what, we need to actually not just watch YouTube, but we need to actually have videos on YouTube. Do you remember that? Yeah. What prompted that? It was, ju it was just, just Rain himself who told yeah? me to come on that. Uh, just Rain told me, he's like, this is a new platform. Uh, he uploaded his video back in 2008 beginning. Yeah. And I came in 2008 late. Yeah. And I saw him doing stuff like 10 things, 10 random things in his room. Uh, a couple other videos he did. And I was like, this is funny, but like, I'm like, how long are you going to do this, right? Yeah. Uh, but then we came with new concepts. He told me some new concepts. We collaborated together. And the whole journey started from there. So you were actually born and raised in India. Born Where exactly? Uh, Amritsar. Amritsar. There we go. Shout out to Amritsar. And so growing up, were you the funny kid? Were you like the kid that everyone would go to and be like, he's going to entertain us? I was a really shy kid. I was a really, really shy kid. Uh, I will not talk to people much. Yeah. Uh, just sit by myself, play games. But later on, like, I started by four, 13, 14, I started interacting a lot. Mm. But I still had a small crew. Yeah. I never had a big crew in high school. I like 10 friends max. That's a lot. But high but, school you went to here? Yeah. I went, uh, grade 9, I came. Grade to, 9. Yeah, grade 9. No, actually, grade 10, I came to grade Canada. Grade 10. Grade 10, I came to Canada. And it was a different culture, different everything. So that was a big surprise for me, but I caught on it. Yeah. Made some friends, but it was never a funny guy. I'm picturing you. Like, yeah. I'm picturing being in grade 10, yeah. and I think high school starts at grade Culture 9, shock. so you've already missed that one year, yeah. and then this new kid is there, yeah. you know, this brown guy, and yeah. everyone's like, okay, where does he fit in? So what, no, where did he that, fit in? It was not that, like, but the school I went to, it was all brown guys. Oh, <laughs> was it? Okay, it was, you're it like, was, I fit right yeah, in. Yeah, it was, I fit it right in, but the culture shock was still there because I didn't dress the same. Mm -hmm. I didn't speak the same. I didn't know the same. Did you know English coming here? I knew, but like, I was not fluid at, at all. Yeah. But uh, the problem I had was uh, adjusting to the, the people around me because they were so Canadianized and I was so Indianized. Mm -hmm. and Explain that. What, what like, Canadianized doesn't like, they had like, Different habits, different everything, different way of living. Uh, for me, I was like, oh, everything had to go through my mom, go through uh, my parents. Uh, everything I do was like, had to be better, amazing. Like mm -hmm. over here, the people, like they're free kids. Yeah. Everything was free. Like, you know, they didn't, they didn't have much headache. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that helped me too, because mm -hmm. it helped me stay disciplined as mm -hmm. well. 
So then high school, you know, most kids, they kind of have an idea of what they want to do. So what were you planning your life on being? Uh, becoming computer science or a lawyer. Com going in computer science or becoming a lawyer. So computer science, I feel like, is a very field, yeah. standard field yeah, that I know most much kids get encouraged to Because my go. parents were telling me to go in computer science. So I'm like, okay, let's go in computer science. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to become a lawyer as well. Yeah. What kind of lawyer? Uh, criminal Oh, you wanted to be like a good guy, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. defending everyone. Yeah. So what I did was I went to Guelph University after mm -hmm. and pursued it. Uh, I was supposed to go to York, end up going to Guelph. Yeah. Uh, last minute, I changed, and that's where I met Just Rain. I was gonna say that's where you guys met. Yeah. So it's kind of like fate. Yeah. It was. It was like yeah. You could say that. Was it actually like as soon as you guys saw each other, were you like, we need to become friends and we're gonna now Not start working together? We hated each other. I was gonna say, I feel like usually when people get together, especially yeah. if they're very similar, it's yeah. a little bit like yeah. you're figuring each other out, right? So you, did you actually hate each other? Yeah, like literally, he used to sit here and I used to sit here. I'm like, yo, what this guy's doing? I'm like, I don't want to see his face, <laughs> All right? And he used to say something because he was too funny. Or? No, it's not that. It was like it was annoying. I'm joking. Yeah, but yeah, he loves you. Too, yeah, right? no, no, no. He was like, uh, he was a funny guy, yeah. but I'm like. I don't I don't understand his comedy. Yeah. So I'm like he's trying to be funny but he's not funny. Mm -hmm. And uh but he always saw me as a funny guy because yeah. I was a Punjabi guy who was funny. And then I, the face came, the funny face came in me. I don't know how he came in me. Yeah. Uh I started making new friends and everything in the university and I guess those people were like they were like kind of like me. Mm -hmm. And then I was like losing up with them so I started started doing comedy stuff with them like mm -hmm. making them laugh and everything. They used to make me laugh, and the whole comedy aspect started from there. Yeah. Yeah. So I just think it's so incredible that this chance that you happened to go to university, you ended up meeting these guys, and yeah. then you guys just one day were like, "We need to make a video." What was your first video? Do you uh, it was a, uh, it was a one shopping cart, and I had like five second rule in it. Yeah. Literally, I was just sitting in it. I'm like, "What's this going on?" He just needed people in it. Yeah, he just needed people. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, "Okay, I'll sit in there." Uh, the second one, he's like. The sitting you did it was amazing. I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> the five seconds yeah, were the best ever. Yeah. And then he told me uh, he's shooting a new video. It's called Dizzy Parents. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I don't know. I would give it a try. Yeah. We went to his house. He knew you, he wanted you to play his yeah, mom. mom. Yeah. I went to his house. He's like, do this. I'm like, all right, I'll try it. Yeah. I started nailing all these shots in one second. Mm -hmm. One shot. Everything was good. He was laughing. Everyone's on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, am I doing something wrong or am I doing something good? But within a week, I watched the video when it finally came out and I was laughing myself. Yeah. Uh, it was just so funny. And then I went to Gurdwara within a week too because uh, I used to live there. And uh, I saw people surrounding me taking pictures and everything. I was like, Yo, I'm not used to this. So mm -hmm. This is so different. So, so you're like, I'm onto something here. Yeah. I, I want to know, with your acting, is it all, do you just do it? fly by like whenever I you're in the scene do, you kind of react yeah. or do so, you have an idea of okay i'm gonna say these lines or i'm gonna make sure this happens no it's just like whatever comes in my mind is to just say it. yeah and it just happens to be funny one so all the women especially the aunties need to be careful around you because you might be studying them and being like i hey. never study anyone i just like i don't know what i guess my brain has a recording button it records everything yeah. that people do yeah Later on, it comes in my mind, and I just do it. Same it's a way. natural talent. Yeah, and I, I, I can say that. Yeah, you can say that. I, I, so yeah. I obviously have known you for many years, yeah, yeah. Um, and we've worked together. And so you are very, I feel like, um, easygoing. I feel like you can really kind of interact with anyone. So I yeah. think that really helps you with your comedy to be like, okay, throw in anyone with you, yeah. and you're able to just kind of vibe off of them yeah. and bring it out. Just right away. Yeah. Uh, I was always stage fright, too, but... Were I you guess, really? Yeah, I was like, oh my god, I can never hold a mic. And even I, when I used to hold a mic, I used to shiver all the time. Yeah. Uh, well, that's changed now, are you shiver. still? No, no. Within a, one stage and that was gone. Yeah. One stage of it. Yeah. And it never came back again. That's fantastic. Okay, yeah. so I think your journey is what a lot of people, especially young people, are like, okay, they're looking at YouTube, they're looking at entertainment, because before there was no brown faces entertainment, mm -hmm. right? Like, you had to be in India, it was the same actors and doing comedy or movies. And you are part of this generation, this wave that was really the first YouTubers. It was you, Just Rain, Lily Singh, right? And mm -hmm. now I feel like all these young people are looking at you guys yeah. and being like, well, look how much success they've had. Yeah. I need to follow. So 
But making it a career back mm -hmm. when you started, that wasn't a thing. Like no. I can't imagine anyone would be like, I'm going to make money off of YouTube. No, this we didn't is know it. that too. So what was that moment or video where you were like, you know what, this can't be just for fun. This is something I think I can do career-wise. 2010, when Google contacted us, we found out that we can get paid. You and weren't getting paid up No, then. we were not wow. making money at all. 2010, we started making money. Yeah. So we were just doing for giggles yeah. and making people laugh and mm -hmm. everything. And by 2010, when we started getting paid, I'm like, holy smokes, we can pay our attrition through this. Were you actually making a lot of money? Yeah, we were making a lot of money. That's like insane. Yeah. I, I, you can tell me if you want, but like your first paycheck. It was not much. I was going to say it's it, probably like it, cents, right? No, like, no, it was dollars. but Dollars, but not enough that you could be like, my tuition is done. No, it, could, it did help me. Attrition. That's amazing yeah. from the first paycheck. Like now first paycheck, I was like, like routinely it became yeah. a big thing. And because tuition fees were not much, like they're like thirty-five hundred dollars a semester. Yeah. So, it was, still, yeah. for you to do a couple of videos with your friends and be able to pay your tuition, pay, pay people, yeah. kids spend their entire summers they, in fast food places, I know. working that money. I know. So. And because the thing we started getting shows right away too. Shows? You mean live shows? Live shows. Yeah. So we started doing like comedy shows mm -hmm. or like hosting, and those helped in. Yeah. Pushed in. So did that help your parents go? Because I, I always think even now, yeah. like it doesn't matter how progressive we've become or mm -hmm. how many generations are here. I think as South Asians, our family, their decisions really impact us, right? Yeah. We really want them to approve of our decisions. So, you know, with your parents, when did they come on board to be like, okay, we support you not being a lawyer, yeah. but to pursue this full time? Uh, back when I started, they didn't know that I was doing this. For like good two months, they were like trying to figure out why. Nobody people... called them and say we saw your son no, in a video. No, because YouTube was not big back in days, mm -hmm. and uh, nobody called them. Nobody. They were like, "Why people are taking pictures? Why people are stopping you?" They were wondering. My mom was wondering a lot. Uh, we used to go to Northfields, and she's like, "Why these random girls are coming to you?" <laughs> and she was just surprised, like, "What's going on in university?" But I guess. Uh, she one day was she was on YouTube and uh, Facebook was like clicking in. Mm -hmm. Uh, she saw one of my YouTube videos. She's like, "What is this? What are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Yeah, like why you have your knee on your head and yeah. everything." And I then explained everything to her. I'm like, "This is what are we doing?" Did she think you were funny or was uh, she like? No, she laughed. She oh, laughed. she did. So she, she, thought uh, she funny. laughed. Uh, she didn't have any problem with it at all since day one. She was like, "As long as you're making people laugh, that's fine," you know. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So she went along with it. Uh, what about third your dad? year, yeah. My dad, like, he's a chill guy. He, oh, okay. Yeah, he's like me. He doesn't care much. So about they were just supportive. They were like, as long yeah. as you're making people happy. As as long as you're happy. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. And third year, when I'm like, either I'm gonna uh, go to law school, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna pursue this, mm -hmm. and that was a hard decision because I had to do my LSATs, mm -hmm. and I'm like, let's drop that now. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's see for a year. If it doesn't go through, then I'll come back to LSATs. Mm -hmm. And I finished my degree, and my career kicked off even more. Mm -hmm. I started getting movies. Uh, started to get... Habarjaman called Bajaman, you yeah. for your Habarjaman debut. called me. Yeah. And then Bhagwantaman called me for the second movie, and the third movie in California. So it started kicking and kicking in. And my parents were like, keep doing this now. This is something... Well, of course. Yeah, yeah. This is something thrilling for you. So... When you were like, okay, I could go to law school or continue this, or I could do YouTube, it seems like you were like, well, I'm getting, I have my parents' support. Yeah. I have money coming yeah. in, right? So it seems like it was a pretty easy decision, or was it? Uh, it was still a hard decision because we don't know how, how sustainable this thing is. So how that was what was holding yeah, you back. My, it was like, will this actually be long-term? Like, nobody ever did this before. Mm -hmm. So we were the first ones in South Asian community to pursue this. So... My parents were like confused, like, is this going to be long term? What's going to do after two years, three mm -hmm. years when mm -hmm. this thing's done? Mm -hmm. So what kind of transition is it going to make? Uh, so that was the most confusing part for me because how long I can act like goofy guy, right? And yeah. Because uh, age and everything comes with the comedy too. And uh, yeah, so then I started thinking long term, okay, maybe I can do from here. Uh, from being in front of the camera, I can go behind the camera too. Yeah. Because I know everything about cameras because mm -hmm. I've been doing this, editing, I've been doing this. So there are so many opportunities. Uh, even TV people called me. Even there were a couple of film people called me. There were 
there were so many options. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can, now I can see there's money, there yeah. is longevity, there's everything in this thing. You can expand to other expand things. Expand to other things. So there are so many transitions you're going to make. Yeah. yeah. So I want to actually talk about that because um, I think it's so interesting how we all grew up with the Punjabi yeah. film industry, yeah. right? And it was always the same actors and um, it was always seen as subpar to Bollywood, right? But now, especially with actors like you, it's yeah. completely changed yeah. and it's become very competitive. So, you know, for you, I think that's so amazing that YouTube not only allowed you to make money and yeah. have fun, but it led you to get your foot into an industry which, unless you were someone's kid yeah. or you were in India, it was very money. difficult yeah. to get into. Yeah. So I read somewhere that when they called you, you like thought you were being pranked. Yeah, I You didn't think it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, I got a call and I'm like, this is a joke. I'm like, why would someone hire me for a, a uh, yeah, movie? Yeah. And I hung up. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, this is a joke, right? Yeah. And did you actually hang up on him? Yeah, I did. You did? Yeah. And then someone <laughs> else called me through yeah. the number and told him this is a real person. I'm yeah. like, oh my God, I'm so sorry about this. Yeah. And even going there, the whole time my mom was like, oh, make sure you don't get pranked or kidnapped or something like that yeah. they're worried and uh they called a couple of other people who i knew in india to take care of me mm-hmm. meanwhile watching me mm-hmm. uh if everything is legit mm-hmm. and then i finally met her pajama on the shoot i'm like okay this is real i call my mom like mm-hmm. don't worry mm-hmm. i got this now so going from being a comedian yeah. because i think everyone should realize you're not trained in this no. like you are just naturally gifted and you've picked up things even now as a producer and director it's Never. just your love for it that you've picked up, yeah, right? Yeah. I think you really absorb that really fast. So for you to go into acting, you know, again, it's one thing to act in, in front of YouTube videos yeah, with your friends, you know, yeah. but then to have an entire set, like to have people, people like Harbaj and Mon, yeah. you know, there, it's now there's, you know. Thousands of people yeah, watching so, you. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was that an easy transition? Uh, it was hard. My, usually I take like two takes on, uh, on camera yeah. at my home. Over there, I took like 18 to 20 takes. So it was really hard. Yeah. <laughs> it was not an easy transition. Was it the actual acting? Was it the language? Was it just uh, nerves? It was just too many people watching me. Yeah. And I had to perform. That was the pressure on me. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, the main thing I would say it was dialogue delivery was the hardest part. It was so easy because I will always used to improvise, mm. but... When you have a script and you remember what lines, because mm-hmm. everything has to flow, yeah, that was the hardest part, and I was never trained for that. Yeah, and that's the reason I was taking eighteen takes. One scene took four hours. Which scene was that? Uh, it was two minute long scene, and mm-hmm. I was the one to start, and I was the one to end. Mm-hmm. So if I start wrong, I end wrong too. Yeah. So I did thirty six takes. So because of that, everyone suffered in the scene. But later on, I learned from there a lot. That yeah. 34, four, four hour training I got in that mm-hmm. scene mm-hmm. made the whole video, whole movie easy after. Mm-hmm. Then I was doing one take, two take, three take, because then I got a hang of it, how to do it. Don't you find, especially being in this business, you know, I always tell people that I'm so used to the cameras now that I don't even think about the end product, like who's watching it, right? Yeah. And I... I remember when I started, I would always be like, oh, my God, what are people going to think? Yeah. Is this going to be? And at once you kind of let go of that and you're just kind of acting for yourself mm-hmm. and actually becoming that person, yeah, yeah. it becomes then so much easier. Yeah, so much easier. But the thing is, remembering some things, script, scripted things were never, I was not used to it. And when I used to get script, mm-hmm. that was the hardest part. Reading, remembering and having the same dialogue delivery they want mm-hmm. was the hardest part. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, everything comes with practice. I got a lot of practice after. Mm-hmm. It was so easy. Second movie, I nailed it. Third movie, yeah. I nailed it. Yeah, so it was good. You're going to continue on. So now yeah. we've, we're still doing YouTube. Yeah. We're uh, obviously, you're still acting, but yeah. you're really taking a role behind the camera. Yeah. So is that something that is a little bit more important for you? Uh, the reason I did that, because I, I saw like sustainability in it. I saw like behind the cameras, you can never go out of industry. That's true. Uh, in front of the cameras, like even Amtab, Terminder, Amtab almost went out of industry. Like if he wouldn't have gone bankrupt, mm-hmm. he would have to do, he wouldn't have done movies, mm-hmm. what he's doing right now. Mm-hmm. So that's why Terminder, all these guys went out of the face. So there's like 10 years, 15 years face. I'm like 15 years. As an actor. As an actor. So I was like, this is really hard. But you're and still so young. Like for, people are probably no, like, you can see For me, so like, you know, but that's like only 4% that makes it. Yeah. Imagine you're not that 4%. Mm-hmm. Like, 
So you're being very smart about yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, I'll do that too. I'll continue mm-hmm. that. But mm-hmm. let me go behind it too so I can sustain my career forever. So what is it like doing the business perspective of it? Because I think when you're, you know, doing this where it's a journey that no one did, like you are one of the pioneers. Mm-hmm. Now I feel like people do look at people like you and go, okay, this is how he did it. This is how I'm going to do it, right? Um, and a lot of people are looking at talent and some people are just doing even YouTube series. Like people yeah. aren't even going to the traditional method. Yeah. So for you to be in this, industry and kind of be the pioneer do you feel like you've set it on the right path or if you could go back do you think you would have changed something like perhaps with the business side that you're like okay i wish i had a mentor uh i think everything what i'm doing so far is really good i don't have any problems right now uh the only thing i can think i could have changed is maybe started my own youtube channel a little earlier earlier, yeah. yeah And, but again, you know, I'm happy with what I have right now. Yeah. So there's, do you ever feel like you wish you had a mentor? Are you glad mm. that you were able to kind of do things? The no, way then wanted? I would have competition. You would have? Yeah. yeah. Uh, then I would have like, how would I beat him down? Like, you know, like yeah. how would we better than him? So I'm, I'm kind of happy that what I'm doing is leaving a mark. Yeah. And people can follow me later on. So you've met actually a lot of famous people. Yeah. People like, like we keep bringing yeah. up Humber's yeah. mom, but there's yeah. so many people. Did anybody ever come up to you and give you like a piece of advice that... always always okay what's the best piece of advice you've ever uh, received just follow your heart just do what your heart wants and that was the best one I think like you know yeah uh, well that's very if, general yeah right? that's very like, general but like that's do a... people come to you say like hey I see a talent in you I see you're doing these things you need to watch it for this or it, that no people always said some things that they were like hey no matter what how much you tell you you do what you want mm-hmm Like, I always did what I wanted. Mm. So they should train me for this. But I'm like, no, I like that's your style, but this mm. is my style. Mm. And that's what people have problems with. Yeah, like I you, can see that. Yeah, like, you always have your own style. So, I, like, they're like, we want you to do this. I'm like, this is no. I'd rather be known for my who I am yeah. than pretend to be someone else. And that's what advice is in a lecture way came. Yeah. Trying to improve me from that side. But I'm like, no, I like what I do, how I do it. So they're kind of sticking to your own guns. Yeah, uh, Mike. That's the reason I think I'm here. If I wanted to copy someone or be someone, yeah. I wouldn't have made it. That's true. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so getting back to famous people, you're getting a lot of recognition. Yeah. I, I think I just saw something. You're like a honey saying just followed you, and you were like, oh, my God. Yeah. So yeah. who is like the celebrity that you've met that for you, you were like, I cannot believe I'm getting the chance to meet this person. Someone you looked up to, somebody yeah. that you're just in awe of. Back in days was her project, man. Was to be it? honest, like I oh. uploaded his picture as a joke. I'm like, I'll be working with him, and in a year that thing happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the biggest thing. Now it's like, I'm like, I know I'm working in this industry, so yeah. I'll be getting calls like this. So I'm already prepared. Yeah. Uh, Honey Singh was one of them. Uh, Honey Singh was like one of my idol, and I always thought that whenever he's gonna meet me, he's gonna beat me up. Because I always made fun of him. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. of the character you yeah, did. Yeah, and uh, I was like, he's going to beat me up. But no, the way he approached me, he followed me. He called me after. He's like, here's my number. Give me a call. Yeah. I gave him a call. He's like, you know what? I've been, I love you. You're meant to be in front of the camera. I'm like, I know what you're trying to say. But like, I'm keeping it both ways. I'm keeping going in front of the camera and behind the camera with my own production instead of, you know, mm-hmm. hey, give me work. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, I'm making work for myself. So speaking of people that, because you have actually, when you do characters, you and the other guys, I always do sometimes see elements of somebody, like a yeah. celebrity that you're yeah. um, mocking, you're uh, mocking. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, it's funny, right? Yeah. One of the other things I've noticed watching back on your videos is you guys weren't just having fun. Mm-hmm. I think that's what many people think. Oh, they're just having fun. They're, you know, making us laugh. If you look at your videos, you actually took on some issues in the South Asian community. Yeah. I know we're getting a little deep here, yeah. but one of the videos I just saw was the wedding one. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because I think everyone can relate to it. They're like, oh, yeah, I've been to weddings like that. But if you look at the actual issues where you hear the comments these guests at the wedding were making, and I was like, my gosh, like they're actually making a safe place where we can discuss that. Yeah. So I was like... Is that something that you guys were like, this is an opportunity for us to actually call people out, the community out to say, yeah. like, this is what you guys do, but it's a safe environment? That was our main, like, criteria of comedy. Always bringing issues. And that making, was the purpose. Yeah, that was the whole purpose. Yeah. Our comedy started with purpose. Our comedy started with issues. Our comedy started with whole uh, idea of making people laugh with the problems they had. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
even our first video like you know like paints saying like o tu kahu je friend kar le ande and then all the ways like do char gadi peeni hai like they were sold in front of each other mm-hmm. right uh, the wedding video you can see uh, like auntie who was dressed as calling other kids like amona ma mm-hmm. tera daddy sardar hai aur aa kudiyan nu sharab nahi peeni chahiye mode nu sharab peeni chahiye aaye jinne marzi pee sakde hai so those kind of problems i always saw and we always include in our comedy the reason that is we want to show there shouldn't be any double standards or hypocrisy behind this kind of things yeah and but we always got a backlash we oh, always yeah? get stopped in gurdwaras we always get stopped in malls by the older generation the older generation yeah, they were pissed, they were mad they were angry mad, eh? they were angry with us they're like you are corrupting our kids blah 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 like yeah. there were so many other issues they had with us cuz we were cuz they were not ready to accept the mistakes mm-hmm. they were making but do you think because of the work that you've done that has it created yeah. a better understanding have you ever had people come up to you and say like you know what my parents are a little bit more chill now or you know they used to be very controlling and it's uh, changed ah uh, we tried yeah but uh, the thing is our culture is so uh like gener- like generally like from years and years control yeah. that is so hard to change it mm-hmm. uh i don't think so. we we tried the max to show like how caste system is bad mm-hmm. how hypocrisy is against girls and ba- boys are bad mm-hmm. but as things still is, exist and yeah. it will take years and years to change it there there needs to be more people like us yeah. to actually make this culture change happen mm-hmm. but even like new generation like us mm-hmm. they're sticking to it mm-hmm. they still want the caste system there i'm like i'm like aren't we our aren't our religion supposed to be against it mm-hmm. but i still see them mm-hmm. oh my god should we can be married to him you yeah. should be talking to him because mm-hmm. he's different religion i'm like it doesn't make sense we try to reflect that in our comedy mm-hmm. but i still think our culture our community is not understanding the aspect behind it mm-hmm. so do you consider yourself religious uh like 20% percent cuz yeah. you were mentioning when you had your first video you happened to go to Dixie Gazwara yeah. so i'm like is that something that plays an important role in your life to uh, god is, god will always play uh like i always say god first mm-hmm. for everything uh the reason that cuz you know having faith is the biggest thing right mm-hmm. so that's about it mm-hmm. i just have a faith in it and that's the reason i go to gurdwara mm-hmm. but being religious is not something i would consider myself to be uh cuz i don't know i just faith is enough mm-hmm. if you have faith in something that's enough you mm-hmm. don't have to be like you know go to do things go do chores or do something just maintain be honest mm-hmm. uh do good and that's about it that's what i maintain myself to be yeah yeah so i've known you for a couple of years i feel like you're still the same guy yeah. from like i think we go back like 6 years or so so yeah. do you feel like life has changed for you or the way you are able to live your life has changed uh, or are you the same guy that Yeah, I'm still videos. same yeah same same person same from friends, YouTube yeah same, same friends same everything yeah. uh nothing has changed much except for my careers even career still same yeah. uh yeah this I don't think so nothing has changed it's just like same thing same transition same cameras same But do you think that's important for you because I know I've interviewed celebrities before yeah. where you know their life just completely changes and yeah. they sometimes have to move away yeah. from their friends and family and then it's difficult for them because now there's a lot of people that want to be friends with you and yeah. suddenly want to give you advice yeah. and go you know do these opportunities and you have to be very careful so is that something that's a reality for you uh, for me i was always scared of like losing my head and yeah. becoming thinking big but uh i like to stay around with people who i started with yeah and i'm still with That's them the best, right? yeah i'm still like with them i rather yourself. not have friends from industry mm-hmm. cuz i don't know who, how they are mm-hmm. if they're going to wish well for me or pretend to be two faces for with me yeah. that's a lot of problems so i stick with my crew stick with what i have yeah uh i don't i want, i'm hungry but i'm not hungry as in like i want this i'm yeah. furry i want this like it come it will come i know yeah. it will come but i'm not chasing it mm-hmm. I'm just going with my flow. Uh I feel like if you have your own flow it's much better than following other people's advice is like go do this go do mm. that and then ending up going down. Yeah. Rather just you know turtles walk yeah. than rabbits walk you will win. 
You're about the hard work. I don't yeah. think people realize the amount of work you put in behind the scenes. Yeah. I think it's very easy to be like, oh, he's coming up to these live shows, yeah. he's doing this, but like, I know yeah. you put in so much work to learn and yeah. to improve yourself. So, you know, we're celebrating 10 years of your YouTube journey. You're still so young. Yeah. So let's go next 10 years. Yeah. Where do you see yourself? What's going to be happening? Next 10 years, uh, I'm shooting music videos now. Yeah, music I've been videos, noticing directing. that. Yeah. So I got into directing. Uh, I felt like that was my forte too. Uh, I feel like th I, s I can see myself becoming a movie director in a couple of years. You're very talented. Yeah, I've so seen your music videos. Six, seven years. Uh, from music, I'll do movie transition. And Are you thinking that, Indian films? You're thinking Hollywood? Uh, no, both? Indian. Indian, Indian yeah, you're more, more Indian. Because uh, I like the culture and I can see I can do better storytelling in that too. Yeah. So maybe in maybe 10 years and for after 10 years forever, yeah. I will stick to this movie industry. Very cool. Yeah. Well, congratulations on everything. Thank Honestly, you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. So proud. Thanks for stopping by. No worries. Thank you. Thank you very much. You want to know what I'm into? We can start with a blindfold. You know the love goes deep, baby. Tell me what you info. I'm over the hill and under the brakes. Over the pain and under the faith. Over the past, I wash it away. Tell me if you're looking to stay. Yeah, now we can get it in through.